All right, yeah, Will Meyer here with our See, Skip, and Rent It segment that we do every week. And we're in the middle of award season, so you'd think mm -hmm. you'd have plenty to talk about. But this week's kind of light on what movies came out. No, most of the big Oscar movies are pretty much mm -hmm. already out. And so there's, uh, there's a lot of junk historically in January that the studios <laughs> dump. But we do have one Oscar contender, uh, Oscar nominee, I should say, that's uh, this week. So. And this is the 13 Hours. No, about, uh, no. no Mustang. Mustang. Best, yeah, Mustang. Up for Best Foreign Language. All right, film, well, so. we'll start with 13 Hours because that's yeah. the first one on our list. And this one's about Benghazi. Yeah, this is a, a movie that it's based on a true story. Mm -hmm. um, it's uh, about six members of a security team who uh, sought to defend the uh, U.S. consulate in Benghazi, Libya from an attack in 2012. It stars John Krasinski, directed by Michael Bay, the director of Armageddon, Transformers, and uh, Pearl Harbor, many other action films. This guy is the king of death and destruction. He loves nothing more than to blow things up and to do it frequently. So this is a bit of a departure for him because it's not robots battling. It deals with uh, serious subject matter. Uh, it's a, an event that's fresh in our memory, a very chaotic one that's going to take some nuance to tell with clarity. Also, uh, there's a lot of political fallout with this event, uh, you know, and smartly he keeps it apolitical and uh, he does a good job of focusing on the characters in the first half hour, so developing those as well as laying out exactly what happened to lead up to the events in Benghazi. Uh, but once the bullets start flying, they don't stop for the next two hours. Uh, the body <laughs> count is in the thousands in this movie, so if uh, you're an action junkie, that's going to be good news for others, not so much. Uh, I love action as much as the next guy, but I found it to be really frustrating in this movie because it's very frenetic and blurry. You can't tell who's being shot at and uh, you know if that guy that is dying is someone that uh, is one of our guys but what's worse is when it is one of our guys we don't care all that much and I don't say that to be insensitive the problem is that we want to care but uh, you know he completely forgets about story about characters once the shootout happens poor John Krasinski this guy uh, you know is our hero in the movie he gained so much muscle gave a really committed performance but he is given nothing to do I was saying to you a second ago uh, he's for, he's out of this movie for like an hour uh, May completely forgets about him and so uh, you know it was pretty disappointing I think it pales in comparison to recent efforts it's like Lone Survivor and American Sniper. So if you're a big action movie fan or military movie fan, you're probably going to like this. But for me, it's a skip it. All right, and now we'll move on to our Oscar-nominated Mustang. Yeah. This is going to completely switch gears okay. to Mustang. This is about uh, uh, set in a Turkish village, five orphan sisters uh, who live under strict rule, and their uh, family prepare their, prepares their arranged marriages one by one. Uh, this is sort of a Turkish version of The Virgin Suicides. It's a coming-of-age movie um, that is uh, very melancholic and also uh, you know, deals with some heavy subject matters. Women are the victims of repression all over the world still today. Uh, it deals with that head-on, but also goes to some other interesting issues. Areas. I actually couldn't tell when it was over if it was tragic or uplifting, which I think is mm. a good thing because uh, this movie is very sad, but it's also very joyous. It's fun to see them uh, break the rules and break out of this house and go to soccer games hundreds of miles away and get into <laughs> trouble and stuff. It's also very funny, surprisingly. I, I laughed out loud a lot. Uh, but, you know, this is a movie that, um, you know, it, there's a sense of dread hanging over the movie because you know that this repression is going to lead to some devastating consequences. So it's a movie that hits a lot of different beats. I enjoyed it a lot. If you're up for a foreign language film, uh, you need to see this one before the Oscars. All right. This one looks pretty good. All right. Moving on to our Netflix pick because you didn't want to talk about some of the other movies. We're going to move on to a Netflix pick, but it's kind of appropriate. Yeah, because uh, I was just thinking, too, I mean, Alan Rickman passed away this mm -hmm. past week, and it's just a devastating loss to the worlds of both film and theater, and I thought, I need to do something about this yep. guy. I mean, he's so great, and uh, he's going to be known, you know, most for his movies, Die Hard, and for the Harry Potter franchise, but I think one of his best movies is Galaxy Quest. This is a movie that was largely overlooked when it came out back in 1999, but now it's recognized uh, for the brilliant film that it is. Uh, you know, the Pulitzer Prize winning playwright David Mamet recently compared it to The Godfather. <laughs> They're calling it a perfect film, uh, which I think is, you know, I don't, I don't know if I'd put it that high, but oh, it is very Tim good. Allen in it. Yeah, Tim yeah, Allen, Sigourney okay. Weaver. Uh, it, it's, an, it's a hysterical film, and it's made, uh, you know, much better by the fact that Alan Rickman's in it. Uh, you know, this is a guy who really gets to explore his full range of talents in this movie. Uh, he's, uh, you know, a sort of a pitiful jerk in the beginning. Then he becomes uh, sort of an endearing sweetheart. He has gut-bustingly funny lines. Uh, you know, it, he's just so clever. Uh, the movie's uh, a spoof of Star Trek, but also just on a base level, a rocking space adventure a satire of uh, fan culture and celebrity uh, you know this is a movie that showed you know as I said just what mm -hmm. Alan Rickman could do which was seemingly anything so it's on Netflix definitely check it out if you haven't seen it perfect for a cold Sunday like we're gonna have absolutely today. yeah <laughs> well thank you so much Stay